Hi everyone and, and thank you so much for joining us again this afternoon uh, on uh, another day of concern for Dubbo and the entire Western region with COVID-19. I would like to start off today's proceedings by acknowledging we are on Wiradjuri country and broadcasting to a range of other uh, Aboriginal countries across the Western region and through the Southern region and Eastern region as well. Acknowledge all of our elders past, present and emerging. Uh, and thank everyone for being part of what is a pretty difficult situation. Uh, joined again today by the CEO of the New South Wales uh, Health District for Western, Scott McLaughlin. Uh, he's joined by the Director of Health and Wellbeing for Aboriginal Health, Brendan Cutmore today, who's been in the field. He can update us on exactly what's happening there. Scott will update us on uh, the condition of some of our cases and where we're heading. Also joined by Assistant Commissioner Jeff McKechnie, who's the Western Region Commander. Unfortunately, a lot more infringement notices being handed out. And the Mayor of Dubbo Regional Council, Stephen Lawrence, who can talk a bit more about some of the community support that is and becoming available into the future as well. Uh, overnight, up until eight o'clock last night, I should say, uh, 18 new cases for the Western New South Wales Local Health District. A breakdown of that is 16 new cases in Dubbo itself. That now takes Dubbo's total to 107 active cases of COVID-19. Uh, there are still three cases at Mudgee, including that one resident of Sydney. There are four cases at Walgett, and included in today's figures are two cases for Burke. Not included in today's figures, but will be incorporated in tomorrow's figures, uh, a couple of extra cases that have come in, so not included in the overnight figures, one case for Narromine and one case for Gilgandra. Scott can talk more to this, but the good news there is that neither was in, uh, infective in the community during that period. So one for Narromine, one for Gilgandra, but not uh, infective in the community. Total number of cases now for the Western New South Wales Local Health District is sitting at 116, uh, and expectations are that that will continue to rise. But we are doing things well, and that includes testing. So over 10,000 tests across the region again yesterday. Dubbo, with its major drive-through clinic uh, testing clinic, has had again uh, between four and a half and five thousand tested. A big shout out to all of the people that are doing the right thing, but also all of the volunteers and staff that are helping out. You're doing an incredible job. We do want you to keep doing that. Any of the milder symptoms or any concerns you have, and concerns now obviously relate to some of those venues of concern. Uh, I would ask you to keep an eye on that. It is updated very regularly. Um, it's, a, it's a case of trying to keep in touch with it as much as you possibly can. Don't overreact to social media posts on community pages, but do take them in mind and then check with factual sources if you, if you could. Um, venues of concern will continue to grow as well. As this case load continues to unfold, so too will, will venues of concern. As much support as possible is being, pr being provided to businesses of all kinds around that, and that is one of the concerns going forward is uh, having to actually close in some cases uh, or not be able to provide services because staff members are being tested and are having to isolate. We understand that and I, I'm very well aware, as we all are, that sometimes the hold up between a test result uh, and being able to, sorry, the test and the test result is, is still quite long. Uh, everything is being done to try and minimise that as much as possible. We do understand it is extremely frustrating. Uh, uh, police notices, as, as I said at the start, are too high. Infringement notices are too high. Uh, Jeff will talk a bit more ab about expectations there, but also the involvement of the Australian Defence Force, uh, which will be uh, getting ramped up in, in coming days. I just want to again just talk about essential shopping. Still many more questions coming in from all around the region about the ability to leave your home. You are able to leave your home. You are able to cross into another local government area, but only if it's essential. If you do need to go and get essential food, try not to be shopping every day. Try and do it just once a week or every few days. Have one person from your household do it so you're not actually providing more opportunities for this virus to spread within your family or through the region. So yes, you can do it. Do it as little as is possible is the main message still. Uh, if we continue to do what we are doing, we have a far better chance of getting on top of things. So that's a pretty simple message to, to reinforce. Scott will talk a bit more about the vaccination support that is coming as well. Uh, staying at home is obviously part of the big solution there. Not everyone will be able to get the vaccine on the same day. That's simply not going to happen. More supplies are coming, but in the meantime, if you don't have a vaccine, that's not the only solution. It's a big part of our getting out of things. But in the meantime, if you're following the stay-at-home orders, not mixing, not 
socialising, you are keeping yourself and your family and your community safe. So that's a really important message. Um, community support, as I mentioned, Brendan uh, will talk a little bit about what he's been doing, but also Stephen can talk about uh, some of the things that, and the planning around that heading into the, into the uh, coming days, I guess, and weeks and how that might actually look. Um, uh, as far as testing numbers, we, we, we are saying, I guess, that the, the, uh, the drive-in is one of the main venues. Piney Park, there have been rumours about that one closing down. That's the walk-in clinic in West Dubbo. That is being maintained, so be reassured that will continue to happen uh, and people will be able to walk into that Pioneer Park uh, scenario. I do want to do a, a massive shout out as well to our pathology teams that are doing an incredible job, particularly at the hospital clinic. Uh, they are working extremely hard. I've had a lot of people saying uh, how, how absolutely thankful they are that we've got some people here in town doing that job. So uh, to the entire team at the Dubbo Hospital Pathology Clinic, massive thank you from everyone. Keep doing what you're doing. We really do appreciate it. Uh, and schools, look, um, at this stage, uh, learning from home is, is the main focus, absolutely. Most people are taking that on board. In fact, at most schools, the number is zero students attending. Some have a couple. I think the highest is about nine at the moment. So keeping focusing on that, if possible, is, is the way to go. If you do need to have a child at school because you're an essential worker, that is absolutely going to be provided, no questions asked, with that scenario in place. The Mian School is non-operational today. That's to allow some contact tracing and some cleaning. A member of the school community tested positive there, so all students and staff asked to isolate until a negative result is received. And the Dubbo West Public School, it has been non-operational. It will remain that way. Uh, there's been um, more contacting, an additional confirmed case, more contacting through the school and through family groups. So if you haven't heard anything, contact the school or New South Wales Health, but those uh, orders you've been following apply and that will continue. Arana Heights, Dubbo College, uh, not operational until, until August 26. Dubbo South Public School, the Dubbo Delroy College campus and Bunninyong Public School, all still not operational as is the Dubbo School of, uh, uh, sorry, Bunninyong, uh, Mudgee High School also not operational. Dubbo School of Distance Ed will actually be operating now from today for any child that needs that support after being cleared. So that's the current update on those stats. I'll ask Scott to come forward now and talk a bit more about some of the health, health, health concerns and health statistics. Great, thanks, Dougal. Um, we've, we've now got uh, over 116 cases in Western New South Wales, but uh, pleasingly in the last 24 hours, we saw a drop of nearly half from the day before of now 18 cases in the last 24 hours. Now, that, that's a drop that is you know, a short-term signal. Um, I wouldn't certainly take it as though we're on top of this or we're going to see continued decreases in coming days. Now, in the last 24 hours, we saw uh, new cases of uh, 16 in Dubbo and the two in Burke that we flagged in the last uh, 24 hours. Uh, since uh, the 8 p.m. last night overnight, we've seen uh, two additional cases identified. Uh, both have been um, in the community, but uh, not infectious in the community. Uh, one at Gilgandra and one at Narromine. I'll come back and talk about those communities in a minute. Um, over all of the 116 cases that we've got, uh, around 60% of those are Aboriginal, and the vast majority in both Dubbo and Walgett. But we're seeing growing numbers of cases in the non-Aboriginal um, community. Again, we've still got a large proportion of our cases, uh, around 40% are in the 10 to 19 year old age group. But uh, pleasingly, um, no cases in the over 70 year old age group. Um, out of all of those cases, we've got um, a growing list of um, people in isolation and a growing list of, of close contacts. And so, can I please ask that everyone observes the isolation requirements, um, stays at the home, um, don't leave the home, Obviously, you need to get tested as quickly as possible and stay in isolation for that, that 14 days. Uh, we currently have two patients in hospital, um, both of those in Dubbo. Now we've seen a patient transferred from Burke to Dubbo in the last, uh, last 12 hours. Uh, we also have around 84 staff of the local health district in isolation at the moment who have either been in close contacts or uh, members of a family of a, of a close contact. Um, out of our total 8,000 staff, that's a, that's a number that we're still managing our services um, well with. Now, importantly, in the last 24 hours, we've seen over 10,000 tests across the whole of Western New South Wales. Can I again say thank you to everyone that's been lining up for tests? I know some of those lines have meant uh, long waiting times 
thank you for your patience, but thank you for the dedication to keeping yourself and all of our community safe and, and getting tested quickly. Um, we now have over 65 venues of concern right across western New South Wales, uh, 56 of those in Dubbo, um, one in Walgett, four in Mudgee, uh, two in Orange and two in Bathurst. Please keep up to date with that list on the New South Wales Health website. It's readily updated as soon as we've got new um, cases of or locations of concern. We've seen uh, six more added in Dubbo overnight and one more in Bathurst, so please um, look at that uh, list and, and uh, make sure you're aware of, of where those, uh, those cases have been. We've seen uh, one more sewage test come back in the last 24 hours positive. There's no surprises in this in Burke, uh, we've got, well, we've got uh, positive cases. Um, back to testing, uh, we saw over 4,500 tests done in Dubbo yesterday. Um, 1,388 tests in Mudgee, so thank you to the community of Mudgee. I know it's been a concerning time, I really, really appreciate the patients in uh, coming to get tested at the AREC. Um, Bathurst over 420 tests, um, Orange over 1,000 tests, um, Parks 210, Wellington uh, 330, and Forbes 101, and importantly in Burke uh, 260 tests. So thank you to our communities right across those locations. We know there's been either confirmed cases or sewage tests um, with uh, COVID fragments in those communities. Uh, testing will clearly continue at the, those large locations at Dubbo at the showground, the COVID safe clinic at Monera Plaza and the, uh, the testing site over in Pioneer Park in West Dubbo. In Walgett uh, tomorrow we'll be shifting the testing back to the multi-purpose service so please uh, call ahead and make an appointment to come and get tested but please in Walgett if you've got any signs and symptoms however mild then now's the time to get tested. Um, Burke tomorrow will continue at uh, Davidson Oval from 9am to 4pm. Uh, the following day we'll be having testing up and running in Angonia, just north of, of Burke between 9am and 2pm. So if you're in the communities of, of Burke and Angonia, please come out and get tested if you've got any symptoms, however mild. In uh, Narromine, with the uh, confirmed case there locally, if people want to get tested, 9.30am uh, today at the showground through to 2.30 in the afternoon and Gilgandra, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, both of those will be available right through the week. Uh, parks at the showground, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. today and throughout the week. Mudgee again at the AREC, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and Bathurst, uh, Mount Panorama, um, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Orange at both the showground and at Wade Park um, throughout the day. At all of the other um, health services, please, everyone come and get tested whenever you've got any symptoms, however mild, um, any concerns, and please, at our local health services, and please call ahead to do that. Um, in vaccination, we're seeing a, a further increase in the numbers of uh, Pfizer doses being delivered into the region. Uh, today I'll see the, uh, the arrival of the uh, Defence Force to come and help us vaccinate uh, big numbers of people right across the, the region. Uh, with two of those teams expected to go out to the, uh, the northwest and smaller remote communities, around Burke, Rewarrina, Walgett and, and those communities. And uh, three of those teams dedicated to Dubbo to helping us set up a walk-in vaccination hub later in the week at Pioneer Oval and a drive-through clinic at the showground. Now we'll provide more details on those when they're firmed up, but it's great news that the Defence Force will be arriving this afternoon with vaccinations and, uh, and dedicated teams to help us vaccinate uh, both Dubbo and some of our remote communities. Uh, tomorrow, today we're in uh, Brewarrina and tomorrow in Wilmeringal with our mobile vaccination team. Uh, that's moved on from Walgett and so we'll continue to, to make sure that that region's a, um, a priority. We've got a, a new group that's going to help us uh, vaccinate uh, called Loxley Health and um, they'll be providing vaccinations to um, some of the communities closer to Dubbo and we'll provide details um, in coming days on those. We've also been able to expand the um, number of appointments in our vaccination hubs in Dubbo, Orange and Bathurst. We're extending the hours out to 12 hours a day with more appointments available. And so please, for all of these locations, if everyone can go and check the vaccination eligibility checker at uh, the Health Direct website or call Health Direct, they can help you identify what vaccination is right for you, what is available locally and how to book into to those vaccinations. Um, we talked yesterday about the uh, changes to our hospital services. Um, we've activated a red level escalation in all of our hospitals. That's requiring a lot of additional PPE um, and screening um, protocols for our, our health services. 
it does mean a decreased numbers of visitors and I know that's difficult for a lot of patients and communities and families uh, not being able to visit uh, your loved ones in hospitals. Uh, for people in palliative end of life situations or mums in, um, in labour and birthing services um, there's still visitors available um, for those services. Uh, we have started to um, scale back our elective surgery services um, for non-emergency and critical elective surgery. There's still elective surgery happening for the more critical and time sensitive um, cases. A lot of the patients have already had contact from our teams across our um, nine hospitals and health services that provide surgery and so I, I do apologise for the impact that this is having. Uh, on delaying the um, elective surgery that you were booked for. We will prioritise you and get you rebooked in as soon as that's available. Um, the uh, public health order, as we know, is really intended to um, help everyone stay away from other people. We've seen significant spread again with people contacting others. We know that the vast majority of the cases we've identified in the last week have been infectious in the community. They're still being there's still people being identified as having COVID-19 in our communities. We need to assume that the person next to you, the neighbour next to you, your children or other people getting around our communities could have COVID. So please take every precaution. Make sure you don't leave your house unless you absolutely need to. Make sure you don't go and have a beer with the neighbour, go down to the town for a pie, or have your kids running around uh, with, with other kids um, unnecessarily. Please, everyone, this is our time to stay safe and please take care of each other. And I know what's a, a really stressful time. So I'll hand over now to uh, Brendan Cutmore. Brendan's our Director of Aboriginal Health and Wellbeing, oversees all of our public health response, but importantly, is also uh, coordinating a lot of our support services for people in Dubbo and right across the, the whole of our region where um, people are in isolation or um, being, being impacted by, uh, by COVID-19. So hand over to Brendan. Thanks, mate. Uh, thanks, Scott. I'm Brendan Cutmore, Director of Aboriginal Health and Wellbeing of Western New South Wales Local Health District, and I'm a Camilleroy and Yorta Yorta man. I, I first of all want to start by saying thank you to those members of our community um, who are doing everything that they possibly can to follow the health messages and the messages from our colleagues at New South Wales Police about staying at home. Um, that message um, is getting through to the vast majority of our community and um, this is absolutely how we will slow the spread down uh, by following these really, really simple instructions. I've spoken already before to everybody about that I know that this is really difficult for our communities um, to do something in a, in a very different way to the way that we're normally used to providing support to each other um, as a part of our traditional cultural practices that we would normally gather together um, and share our resources um, and that we would normally provide that type of assistance face to face. But right now, it's incredibly important that we stay in our own homes. And those support services that I'm gonna talk about um, now um, are the services that are gonna do the things that you're normally used to doing. So I want you to trust them to reach into the homes to provide the food and medical assistance if required that your family members will need. Your job is to stay in your place of residence and try to stay in touch with your family members in a different way, which is either via text or over the internet um, through some of the um, social media platforms or over the phone to ring up and have a yarn. If you need to, you can reach out to the support services to ask them just to um, give you some feedback if required about how your family is going. So in terms of some of the, the supports that we've got on the ground, my team continue to keep supporting any of the Aboriginal families um, or homes that, um, that have a confirmed case of COVID-19. What we're doing is that we're uh, ensuring that on the, um, as quickly as possible, we're getting into you any of those urgent food or uh, medical requirements um, that, that you need. The food is obviously to get you through that night um, and the next morning, and there's a range of other support services that are providing um, stay-at-home hampers and food packs that are gonna help you with the days that, that, that follow that. If for whatever reason you find that, um, that someone hasn't reached out to you or you feel like you've fallen through the cracks, then reach back out to our team through your case support person who will introduce them to you, themselves to you and they'll ensure that, um, that we do everything that we possibly can to support you until those other longer term um, supports are available. 
our mobile testing team have been very busy um, and um, they're reaching into the homes of, um, of people who have those really, really complex issues um, with being able to get out to our mobile testing sites. And, and they are people that you know, have mobility issues because of pre-existing um, uh, health conditions um, or disabilities. They're equally people who might have um, a lot of caring responsibilities um, or some other sort of exceptional circumstances. What I want to encourage you to, you to do before you reach out to our mobile testing team, because as you can imagine they're very busy, is to think about whether or not you really do need that um, service to reach into your home, um, or if you, um, like the vast majority of the people that live across our region, are capable of actually accessing one of our other services. The other services that have, um, that have come on board uh, across our region, they're doing amazing things, um, and I know that they're reaching into homes not just in Dubbo, but um, right across our footprint. What I want to encourage all of you to do is that these are the people that you've ha already had relationships with before. They're people that have provided services to you over a long window of time. You know who they are. If, if anything is going wrong for you in your life, I want you to have a conversation with those support services, particularly if you can't reach, um, if you can't get through um, to any of the, um, the health services that are available because those support services will play a connecting role for you. Now we're getting to absolutely everyone that we possibly can and I'm confident that we're reaching in um, to all the homes that are, the, that are requiring that urgent um, assistance and we will be here to do everything that we possibly can for you. Um, but what I want you to do is to continue to keep following the health messages, um, help us slow this thing down uh, by staying in your home. I'm gonna hand it over to Assistant Commissioner Jeff McKechnie who will speak to you from New South Wales Police. Thank you, Brendan. Good morning, everyone. Yesterday, uh, across Western Region, we, as part of Operation Stay at Home, we were still required to issue around 80 infringement notices to people who aren't heeding uh, those very clear messages at present. In Dubbo itself, um, around 32 infringement notices were issued yesterday afternoon and overnight for people uh, still intent on moving around uh, the city without a, a reasonable excuse. Now that puts obviously our police um, out there in a really difficult spot. These fines now are $3,000, most of them as a minimum. Um, there's not a, a lot of discretion available to us anymore. We've um, given out a lot of warnings and now we're writing out infringement notices to people, you know, for three thousand dollars, just because they simply can't follow some very basic requirements of keeping themselves, their families, and their community safe. Now, every police officer in Western Region that is available to us at the moment is working, and they are out there focused on stay at home looking for people breaching these orders. We, we don't apologise for that. That is our job in this crisis. That's what the community wants us and needs us to do to, to keep you safe. So please, if you are flouting those rules, if you are doing the wrong thing, there is a very, very strong chance that you are going to be detected. A big part of our work at the moment is around um, compliance with the health orders by people who are uh, quite ill and actually are suffering from uh, COVID-19. To that end, the ADF, the Australian Defence Force personnel uh, arriving in Dubbo this afternoon, are going to assist us with a lot of our compliance work. 25 ADF staff will be specifically tasked by Superintendent Danny Sullivan and his team here at Dubbo to compliance tasks, business inspections, um, mobile patrols, making sure that the health orders are being complied with. Now we really welcome uh, the additional assistance provided by the ADF. I've had a number of people raise with me, will the community be concerned? Are there issues around having uniforms? No, there's not. The community of Dubbo will welcome the involvement of the ADF because we as a community um, have largely risen to the challenge 
uh, of this crisis at the moment. I'm sure 99.9% you know, .9 of people are doing the right thing. Scott reports we've got no cases at the moment with people over 70. Maybe people over 70 are better at complying that some of our, than some of our younger people. Please, um, take notice of what I'm saying today. Uh, we don't want to keep writing out those tickets, <coughs> but we will. And um, if you're out and about this evening, into the future, while ever this order's in place, there is a really strong chance that you're going to be detected and uh, issued with those significant fines. From an emergency management perspective, you know, obviously I look after an area from Lithgow to Broken Hill to uh, Tenderfield. Um, a lot happening across that whole footprint. Um, all of our local emergency management committees are meeting regularly and they're feeding back into our region emergency management process um, that I chair from here in Dubbo. Um, issues around compliance uh, exist right across the region, but also we're working hard with our partner agencies around the testing. We're seeing great numbers right across Western region in terms of people turning out for testing. Uh, we're going to support the vaccination processes where we can as well. And by all working together, each of us doing our little part, um, we will get through this current situation and hopefully get everybody through with us. Um, we don't want to see um, people lose their lives, people losing their livelihoods, people, children in particular, being infected by this virus. So please do your bit, work with us, come on board and let's make sure we get through the next couple of weeks. Thank you. I'm going to hand over to our Mayor, um, Steve, and he'll um, talk us through the uh, local issues. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jeff, and good morning, everybody. Steve Lawrence, Mayor of the Dubbo Region. So 18 people um, overnight have received some pretty unpleasant news. Want to send a message of sympathy and support to those people on behalf of the community. Um, I think we now all know what it's like to receive a text message saying that we're a close or a casual contact. Even that is pretty upsetting and can provoke a bit of anxiety. So we can only really imagine what it's like to be diagnosed with this horrible disease. So the whole community is thinking about you guys. You have not done anything wrong. You've just been unlucky and the community is well and truly behind you. Um, I want to send a message out to the community really of congratulations. The community reaction in the Dubbo region and across Western New South Wales speaks so well of our community. We've seen some 28,000 people go and get tested for COVID-19 in the last little while. It's more than half of our regional community. It's absolutely uh, extraordinary. It's exactly what the Western Health Authorities were asking us to do and the community has done it. Um, I said at the beginning of all of this that we were in such a strong position to deal with this. So I don't want people to be discouraged by these numbers that seem to continually rise. Scott's been really clear from the beginning that we've had a lot of people in the community pre the lockdown. A lot of people were infected and continued to be in the community until they were diagnosed. That is reflected in these numbers. Um, I don't want to point to any trend from the numbers today, but it's certainly better than an upward increase on the numbers yesterday, on the new numbers yesterday. We can get on top of this and the way that we get on top of it is to comply with the lockdown and to help each other to comply with the lockdown. Uh, it should be said that this is not a punishment. This is a community effort. It's a community effort by all of us. And on behalf of the community as mayor, I want to welcome the ADF. I think it's really a really good thing that that support has been offered. Community has nothing to fear from the ADF they will be here in a supporting role. So don't be alarmed when you see people in uniform. Uh, they're very friendly people and they're here to help. So again, on behalf of the community, I want to welcome that commitment and that support that's come from the federal government. Um, it's certainly very welcome. Um, in the midst of this incredible reaction from the community, it should be acknowledged that this is 
particularly difficult for some people. We have people who live alone. We have people who live in really big families and big households. We have people that live in small houses and people in big houses. Uh, we have kids who might normally live between three or four homes. Uh, they've had to choose a home. Um, and let's be really honest about this. We have people living in unhappy homes. We have people living in homes that are violent sometimes. Uh, we have drug users who, who aren't using drugs at the moment because they're complying with the lockdown. So we need to acknowledge this real contribution that everyone is making to this amazing community effort. I think our compliance levels are to be applauded. And that's not to take away from anything that Jeff has said. It is not good that we still have people breaching. We see that across the state. But our community, I think, is in an incredibly strong position to deal with this. It's harder for some than others, uh, and that should certainly be acknowledged. And I want to congratulate those for whom it's been particularly hard, because we need you to keep going. This will work. The only thing that will work is this <coughs> lockdown. Stay at home and we will see eventually a drop in numbers because this community response is going to be effective, it's going to work. Um, in terms of support to the vulnerable, I um, want to encourage people that already are getting support from existing services, and I'm talking about pre the lockdown, to continue to access those services because those services will be able to connect you to, this, to the particular support that is available. Um, anyone who needs support as a consequence of this COVID-19 uh, outbreak here in our region should, um, as a first point of contact, if necessary, if there's no existing services, use the 1300 066 055 Western New South Wales number. Uh, that number is available for anyone who's been impacted and the good people there and the staffing numbers have been increased will point you in the direction of the support that you need. Uh, but again, I'm sure that many people out there will be well and truly connected with existing service providers. So please use those because they will help you um, in getting the help that you need. I'd like to say a few things particularly about small business. Um, our small businesses have been hit incredibly hard. And just think every time you get a text message, and we're all used to it now, saying that you're a casual contact in relation to a business, you're talking about a business owner who might well be shut down for a period as a consequence of that. So this is hitting people hard. Um, I know that a lot of business people are well on top um, of the New South Wales business website, are well on top of Service New South Wales and the federal site. Uh, but if you're getting a bit lost in the detail of the websites, if the websites are a bit slow, if you can't sort of navigate them and get the information that you need, then please ring our economic development team at Council uh, just ring up the normal council number, 6801 4000, ask to get put through to our economic development unit, and they will help you to access the range of grants and support that are now available. I want to encourage everyone to access those services because you can be very sure if you don't access them, then there will be someone else out there that will. Uh, they are your entitlement as a citizen. This is what government is for, to help people in the hard times. So don't assume that there's no assistance because there is a range of assistance available. So again, just want to congratulate the community for this amazing community effort. We are so well placed to contain this virus if we all do the right thing, and that includes people in really difficult circumstances. So again, a big congratulations to the community. Um, I'll step back and think we might have some questions from the media. Thanks, Stephen. Yes, so we do have media joining us virtually today, um, so we're available for questions. Uh, Annabelle, we'll hand over to you if, if somebody's ready for the first question, who they'd like. Thanks, Thanks Google. Can we get Ryan Young? Um, if you have any questions, Thanks, Ryan. So we just had a question about the test and isolate payment that is available currently for, it is only available for the hotspot LGAs in Sydney at the moment, and it is um, 
quite a restrictive payment. You don't receive that payment if you're receiving other payments of New Start, Youth Allowance, Pension, um, if you are able to be employed, working from, from home, etc., etc. So it is available to a very limited number of people. Uh, at this point in time, it is being looked at as to whether Dubbo and or the region or certain local government areas in our region would, should qualify for a payment like that. That's based on getting a test and needing to isolate and in that time losing, losing some work. So obviously that there are availabilities of, of provisions for employees through Services Australia. Uh, that's through the federal government. So it's, uh, it's all quite broadly listed, you know, between uh, 450 and about $750 for people depending on the hours of work you've been affected. And from the business perspective, that is all through Service New South Wales. Again, uh, I think a lot of people aren't quite aware of what they might fit into, whether it's a micro business solution or a medium business solution. There is something there. Uh, there's a lot of different ways of, of being helped. Some of it's around payroll tax, some of it's around immediate hardship payment, and it's based on figures being provided as far as your turnover. So look, for, for any employees that are worried, talk to Services Australia, and, and there's a very simple contact through that. Uh, I don't have it off the top of my head, but Services Australia and Service New South Wales is the one for businesses. So everyone who is being impacted financially, we want to reach out and we want to provide some sort of help. Yeah, just asking about the, the investigation around the original source of the infection. Scott can probably talk to this a bit when he answers some questions too. But look, the, the priority is not uh, actually finding that initial source now. We've sort of moved past that. There are still investigations that do continue into the, in the background and that uh, actually gets reinforced through some of the contact tracing uh, that, that is happening with other cases. So um, at, at this point in time, we're now at a, over 116 cases. Uh, the finger pointing about the original one sort of doesn't matter as much. The contact tracing will probably end up informing that at some point. Uh, but at this point in time, we're looking at the future rather than worrying too much about exactly where it started. We know it's a continuing uh, emergence and we need to focus on that a bit more as well. So we've got a lot of things in place around our hospitals to make sure that our patients and our staff are protected as absolutely much as possible. Now that uh, contains a lot of supports for staff. Um, we know that staff are going home to households and coming back into work and so there's regular testing opportunities for staff. Uh, there's a range of uh, screening solutions to help us make sure that anyone that's coming into our health services are safe to come into our health services and that includes a lot of contractors and other support services. Importantly for all of our patients, uh, our staff are just amazing in um, making sure that our patients receiving good care are also kept safe and so our personal protective equipment and, and other um, layers of protection for all of our patients is, is absolutely crucial. Now we do have around 80 staff that are in isolation or not able to come to work at the moment. Some of those are for just a couple of days and some of those are for a longer term. And we've got over 8,000 staff across the local health district and so uh, we know that that's a bit of a pressure point where we're in the process of recruiting in a lot of additional staff, we had just 90, um, overnight just 90 additional um, nursing staff identified that are available right throughout the region. And so we'll continue to look for opportunities for additional staff to, to help us through this.
Uh, so we've now opened up all of our vaccination centres to um, people over the age of 12 for Pfizer vaccinations, um, and particularly for Aboriginal people. And so um, I really would encourage everyone to, um, to book a vaccination as quickly as possible through your local GP, your Aboriginal medical service, the pharmacies that are available now, the um, dedicated vaccination hubs, and I know there's a range of other services. Go to Health Direct website, the, or call Health Direct and they can help you with those. So there are Pfizer and AstraZeneca vaccines available today. Um, please take that step. AstraZeneca is a safe and effective vaccination. We've seen skyrocketing numbers of people in the last couple of weeks uh, wanting AstraZeneca, and so I really would encourage that as a good, available and safe, effective vaccine uh, for the people in the 40 to 49 year old age group, you are a priority. And so please uh, take that step and book in for a vaccination. We've certainly got the vast majority of the cases are located in West Dubbo, but we've got an increasing number of cases in the last couple of days in smaller communities and villages around Dubbo, and now today uh, cases being identified in Narromine and Gilgandra. And so, but the message here is um, COVID is on the spread in Western New South Wales. It's in all of our large regional centres in Dubbo, in West Dubbo, but also in smaller communities around. We've got to assume that every household your neighbour, your friend, the people you might be in a line behind uh, down at the shops um, could have COVID. And so please, everyone take care. This is time to do all of the things that will keep us safe with all the mask wearing, um, social distancing, your hand hygiene, and particularly checking into facilities with QR codes. It's one of the most crucial things that's gonna help our contact tracing teams out. We know some people are trying to avoid doing that so that they don't get caught up in this. It just puts it all, there's all a danger. So please take all of those steps to keep everyone safe. I haven't got updates on the vaccination rates. We know about a week ago they were at 38% uh, for the whole of the population having a first dose and about 17% for the second dose of vaccines. We know that that's about a third of that rate in the Aboriginal community. And so I really would encourage everyone, come and book a vaccination. It is urgent. There's opportunities available across the whole of the primary care services and our vaccination hubs. The cases over identified overnight in both Narromine and Gilgandra, neither of those cases were infectious in the community. In the previous 24 hours, what we're still seeing, the vast majority of those cases were infectious in the community. I think there was only three out of the 18 that weren't. So um, th this really is time for us to be all very vigilant. Um, assume that we do have COVID circulating around all of our communities and take all the steps to keep yourself safe. I think it would be too premature to say anything about the uh, the case numbers overnight. It was pleasing to see a decrease from the, the 35, 36 the day before. Um, I really do want to make sure that everyone is so vigilant at the moment. But even having 18 new cases identified overnight is still a significant problem for us. We know that they're spread right across Western New South Wales and in every community. And so um, please get tested, um, get vaccinated, do all of the things that will keep yourself safe and, uh, and make sure you stay at home wherever possible. Um, Paige Taylor from the Australian, have you got any questions?
mean, we saw a, a lot of people vaccinated in Walgett over the last four or five days, nearly a thousand people. And so thank you to everyone in Walgett that came out and got vaccinated. Uh, there's a team in Gadooga today from the Brewarrina AMS that's uh, vaccinating in Gadooga. Please come out today uh, if you can in, uh, in Gadooga. We've got teams in uh, Brewarrina and Wilmaringle um, today and tomorrow. And in those smaller communities, please come out and get vaccinated. In Burke, we know that the Burke community is absolutely a priority for vaccination hubs. We're working closely with the Australian Defence Force who have brought in five teams into the region to uh, help us fast track vaccination programs to try and get that stood up in Burke as quickly as possible. How long do you think the ADF will be out in those communities helping them? Well, we know the ADF uh, deployment is for a number of weeks at the moment and you know, we'll take stock of things over the next uh, next week or two and. Um, and extend that if, uh, if possible. We know there's a lot of disability providers around the region. I really would encourage everyone to reach out, make sure you keep, keep contact with your disability support workers and other um, care workers that, um, that are available in all of our communities. We know our most vulnerable people should be our absolute priority at the moment, so please, um, this is time to look out for everyone. I can just say a thank you to everyone for playing a role at the moment in staying at home. As the Mayor said, this is time to show some care and compassion to all of our communities. Um, please don't for a second think that it's okay to leave home. Um, stay safe. Thanks everyone.